You're listening to Convenience Matters, brought to you by Nax. We'll talk about what we see at stores and what the future may hold for our industry. We just concluded the NAC State of the Industry Summit, and we looked at sales from 150,000 stores in the U.S. We also have the ability to look at stores from other parts of the world, and that's going to be our conversation today. Joining us today to talk about global convenience store trends is Jason Zelensky. He is Client Director of Convenience and Growth Accounts with NIQ. Welcome to the program, Jason. Hey, thanks, Jeff. Um, longtime listener, I guess first time guest. Love being here. All right. Sounds like old school radio. Well, if it sounds like we're working from home or working from airports or something like that, we are that fresh off from the SOI Summit. Uh, NIQ is a valued partner in the NAX uh, data enterprise and helped put together some of those uh, numbers. And like I said, if you hear, uh, you know, Something that sounds like we're in a hotel or leaf blowers, you, you know, we're back to, to working from anywhere. And, and so excuse any of that. But let's just start with the first one. We, we talked about the NIQ numbers during the SOI summit and um, NIQ, that's a little unfamiliar to some people. Can you take us through this name? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. Um, uh, so some probably would know us uh, as Nielsen or if you've been in the business for a long time, AC Nielsen. And uh, what we are is uh, we consider ourselves that you know, unbiased third party global leader of um, sales trend metrics. So uh, in the U.S., you know, we we. Uh, deal with all channels and then uh, globally. And so, uh, which is what makes the NAX uh, NIQ partnership so great. So uh, not only are we able to see what's going on uh, with the convenience channel specific to this conversation here in the United States, but we can expand that to North America, Latin America, EU, Asia Pacific, uh, so that we really could see like what trends are, are happening uh, in CPG sales uh, across regions. And uh, that's a good kickoff to just to start to dive in for the past four quarters, for the past year, uh, NIQ uh, has put together some metrics looking at uh, data right now. It's a, a, it's over 30 countries in, in just what is going on by country in convenience. Can you, can you kind of tell us what this whole enterprise is about um, as we now have a year of data? Yeah, yeah. So um, we are looking at uh, uh, four regions. So uh, as I said, the North America, EU, Asia Pacific, Latin America, and uh, we have like, I think it's 50 some odd fun filled pages full of uh, uh, facts and uh, metrics. And then uh, what's really great is um, with our, our scale, we're able to bring in our local team leaders in each region to provide commentary on what they're seeing. So not only do you get uh, the raw numbers, which uh, sometimes, uh, you know, it's all uh, defined locally, so it might not make as much sense, uh, but you'll get those local leaders to, uh, to comment on why uh, they see that maybe baby food is doing really well uh, in Asia uh, versus candy sales doing really well in, in the EU. So uh, you're right, we've been doing this for uh, a year now and it's, uh, it's great. And actually, I'll, I'll take a step back. I'll say it's part of like the, the NIQ um, NAX relationship where we're, we're trying to publish more uh, information that's useful uh, to your members. So like we do the webinars uh, and then we also are in the NAX magazine. So we're, we're just looking to uh, get the word out that, you know, convenience is a, a, an important channel and, and what's going on across that channel, whether it's locally or globally. And one of the things you, you constantly hear about our industry, I mentioned 150,000 stores in the U.S., 60 some percent are one store operators. And, and the one thing that you hear over and over, whether it's one store or a thousand stores, it's like our industry shares, our industry tries to make each other better. And when you look at the tools available, uh, whether it's at meetings that, that NAX has or state associations or somebody else, and the data that's available to make you better, it, it really is impressive that, uh, you know, you can, you can not just now it's obviously important to be local in terms of what does the local market want? Because of course, that's how you make your sales dollars today. But when you look a little global, you might be able to find something, even if you have a store or two, you might be able to find something that, that, Hey, that's a trend. Maybe we ought to think about that. There's a German of an idea here with all those, as you said, fun filled facts and figures. Yeah. So, um, 
you know, an example of that might be uh, we were as we were tracking last year with all of the, the inflation. And by the way, if you look at our global report that we just did the, the annual. So we summed up the four quarters. And we looked at the annual and convenience is doing great. A lot of that's inflation. So uh, everybody's doing great right now. You know, you look at all channels. And so uh, every country, uh, C store is doing well, except I, I think there's maybe two. But when you peel back the layer of, OK, well, it's inflation. Uh, that's causing my whole store uh, to rise. But how do I maybe get ahead of that with um, looking at another country in a category that might not be um, as prevalent in, in my assortment? An example of that would be frozen food, so especially frozen meats. So this is something that uh, the, we've seen that the, the prices of, of fresh meat and fresh seafood, which I know is not, you know, um, you're not going to find that in many doors inside Sea Store. Um, but uh, because the price of those commodities have gone up so high, the consumer has started looking at frozen foods uh, as an alternative and because and frozen foods have a much better price tag on them. And so we saw in uh, European countries, you know, starting, they, they got on that um that train pretty early where frozen food started spiking. And then uh, now we're seeing it in the United States. Um, and that's a, that's been one of those trends that's been really interesting to see as those commodity prices keep rising, how people are turning into, you know, a less expensive alternative and doing that shopping inside a C store. That that's a, I think that's a really potentially important takeaway for a lot of retailers that are looking at fresh, whether it's fresh produce or fresh meat. When we were doing a lot of work with nutrition related organizations, partnership for healthy America, et cetera, a few years ago, one of the things we talked about is uh, as we move towards healthy, uh, the, the natural assumption is it must be fresh. It must be fresh green beans. It must be fresh spinach. It must be you know, fresh fill in the blank in terms of a fruit or vegetable. But what the nutrition community said is canned and frozen is just as good as long as there's not significant added salt or sugar. So what the benefit of that, if you're on a, on a low income, is just like at the retail level, you don't have shrink. And shrink was an issue last year um, with spoilage, among other things, because of erratic demand coming out of the pandemic. But it also allows a customer... To, to let the money go a little further, not not only the price point, but you don't have to worry about that. Oh, geez, I didn't have that spinach in three days. Now it's a mess. It, it's in the freezer. It can last months. So that could be a, a way when people are so value sensitive to, to look at a global story and say, this does work in our community. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I could we could stay on this topic for a while, Jeff. Uh, you know, we could turn this into the sustainability conversation where uh, it is it is tried and true that the consumers are looking to get um, yeah that the healthier option. But you're absolutely right that that healthy option can be shelf stable. It does not have to be you know perishable. And I think that for this channel specifically, that um, as they're trying to get healthier options in their store, that yeah, shelf stable, whether it's frozen or it's canned, um, you know, just paying attention to the label, just as if you were a consumer, uh, mm -hmm. you know, is, is a great option for them. We talk about uh, at a lot of meetings, um, store tours, show pictures of, of stores, uh, encourage people to visit stores, particularly our convenience dumb at Asia and convenience dumb at Europe, which um, the, the Europe conference is coming up in a couple of weeks. Uh, the data that's available for free in these quarterly reports, uh, you can take a store tour of 32 countries. Now, not pictures, but the data can paint a picture on, you know, then you can probably do a little research and this is what a store looks like over there. But uh, are there any things that, that are significantly different in looking at various countries, um, stores being smaller, stores being bigger? I, I imagine the general uh, overview is that these are smaller stores? They are they are less likely to sell gas, but um, they do a lot of business because that's convenience is a global trend, as you said, and it is very healthy. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And so uh, when we look at the the various regions, we find that um, like Asia is is really on that trend of there's there's less uh, petrol being sold out of those convenience stores, and they are, are smaller, and it's 
really interesting to see what the consumer buys over there. And I, I think I said baby maybe at the top of this call, but we, that's what we're really seeing is that there's a lot of uh, family and home needs that are being solved for by the C store. And so uh, uh, the convenience store really becomes a, a more of a, a one-stop shop, even though it's small uh, for those families. And there's a lot of them, you know, it's uh, highly uh, densely populated uh, countries. And then when you go over to uh, the EU, you know, what you find is that, you know, fresh food is actually really big over uh, in uh in the C stores over there, as well as private labels. That's another thing that, um, you know, here in the U.S., uh, if you want to hear more about private label, we did a webinar on it uh, last year with Nax. Um, but uh, we're seeing that there's a lot more adoption of, of the private label and the fresh food over uh, in the EU. And then when you get down to Latin America, it's, it's more of the bodegas that, um, that you're seeing. Uh, as you get north, it then starts to turn into, you know, traditionally what you would expect out of a convenience store. You know, it's the, the two to 4,000 square foot store with a couple pumps outside um, but yeah uh, but the categories that they sell you know I, I, there are similarities and then there are differences you know smokes uh, are big some places and uh, not so big in other places and actually that was something that we started doing in the report is is peeling back total store performance minus tobacco um, because we were really finding that the report was turning into the tail of tobacco versus the you know what is going on with the the, the rest of the c store and and that in our inflation numbers, we found that C store inflation wasn't uh, on par with uh, all the other channels. When you take tobacco out, it actually is, uh, which I thought was very, very interesting. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. And you look at uh, in inflation, inflation, inflation. That was a, a big theme at the, the NAX SOI summit. Um, you look at some place like Argentina. And sales are up 90%. And it's like, wow, that's awesome. They are just absolutely killing it. And then you see inflation's 110%. It's like, oh, they're getting killed. That's what's happening. Um, but you know, inflation is related to either by country or sometimes by category. And uh, the analysis that goes along with that, you know, lists what's hot, what's not, what's up, what's down. Um, you really it's it's it, it, it's a fascinating look at at what's going on around the world. Largely demonstrating that convenience is prized around the world, but you know it, it gives you a really good sense and what might fit in one corner of the world in my corner of the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, other categories that are really interesting uh, when you start thinking about regional is you get into the the Beval space, and so. Um, here in North America, Beval um, and beverage overall uh, has just been dominating those positive sales trends. And, you know, you, you can see that if you if you look at the report um, versus when you get outside of North America, then you get more into salty snacks um, and then perhaps alternative snacks. And so uh, I, I'm focusing mostly on the positive, I, you know, the what's not. You guys can look at the, the what's not. Um, but um, but. Uh, and then, then this is where the questions start coming to us, Jeff. Of like, well, what is an alternative snack when I'm in Peru? Um, because the alternative snack in Peru is not the alternative. You know, it's it's not the alternative snack that you might see, uh, you know, in Chicago. Let's just say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, alternative snacks in the U.S. is is you know seeds and nuts. Uh, mm -hmm. There, um, that is probably very much mainstream. And then there's something else um, that that is uh, very much different. Um, to both uh, are just not as common in that country and probably very uncommon here. Um, you, you not only look at trends related to frozen, and we talked about uh, frozen fruits or vegetables, but you have things like uh, frozen soup and stew in South Korea up 98% and uh, all kinds of very interesting uh, numbers related to the growth of frozen, which you know we we talked about a little bit, but seems like a real possible trend. Um, if you if you see a cultural dynamic that might might possibly be filled. Yeah, one of the other ones uh, that we're seeing that that's coming through is the. Um, uh, is coffee so that's a and i know in uh in the united states you know hot coffee ready to drink coffee is, is very very popular but we're actually seeing uh huge growth uh especially in south america you know just on 
uh, like like whole bean and ground coffee. You know, it's just not something that that we uh, I, that we probably uh, put too much shelf space on. Um, but we're we're definitely seeing explosions in that uh, down there. And uh, and to your point on uh, you know the the inflation number, we do this what's hot, what's not. So you know, we'll give you five categories in every country that um, is having positive sales, and then we're going to give you five categories that are not doing so hot. When, when you get to South America. Your your what's not are still up thirty <laughs> percent, so mm-hmm. um, they're they're still up significant amounts. Is there any trend that that uh, you think in particular is something that um, no matter where you are, no matter what country, it it might be worth um, just keeping in the back of your mind uh, as as something that that could be a trend that we're talking more about on the stage, whether it's at next year's state of the industry uh, summit or some other point down the road. Yeah. So I I guess I would be, you know, talking a bit tongue in cheek, but the the best and biggest trend is having a clean and safe store. Right. Um, But I think we're, we're talking about category trends. So yeah, no, uh, but I, that is, uh, I absolutely agree with that one too. And that's something that we also heard at the, the next, uh, so I sum it is just the blocking and tackling. And, and if you don't have a clean bathroom they're they're not going to be buying your food. And, and that's absolutely right. And we, and uh, it's not in the global report, but we track that in country after country when we're looking at what's driving consumers into stores. And it's always in the upper right quadrant of what is, you know, what is the consumer expecting to find when they walk in and how does it um, affect their trip the most? And that's the clean and safe store. But let's talk about, uh, you know, uh, assuming your store is safe and clean, what, you know, what should you have out for them to purchase? And I think that um, we talked about this in SOI as well. It's the fresh food, uh, service food. It's um, it's uh, if you can get your brand to have a consistent fresh food message, um, it then, uh, you become a destination uh, because it can only be solved by your store and you increase your store loyalty. Uh, some of the products that uh, C-Store has traditionally sold are commodities, which you could get at one C-Store or another C-Store. But when you really get into that service food and solving for a meal solution, uh, you build that repeat traffic that can only be solved by your store. And we're seeing that in Europe. Like that's, that that's, I, I'll go back to the Europe uh, examples where they, they have a, a, a really robust fresh food offering, um, you know, service food. And that uh, here in the United States is uh, we're starting to replicate that uh, pretty good. We heard the, we have heard that phrase uh, along the lines of what you just said. How do you decommoditize a commodity? Because everyone sells drink X snack why fill in the blank but why come to your store it, it, it how do you find that differentiator it's probably not around price it, it's either because it's a right hand turn now or there's something i can get there that i can't get somewhere else and and that sounds like it's the differentiator around the world just as well how do you how do you get somebody to go to your store because you have something clean bathroom, customer service, unique product, pick one, pick three that you can't get somewhere else. Yeah. Pick them all. And then, um, yeah. And your customer service is, is absolutely right. And that's something that, you know, as operators, they, um, you know, we can come up with a a really good fresh food or service food, uh, mission, but it's the stores themselves that have to execute. And so that's the, you know, when you're looking at your infrastructure, can, uh, I know we, I think we talked about this at SOI, you know, they were looking at, you know, is it the right fit when they were talking about, you know, CapEx remixes and, and how to reinvest in your, in your stores. But yeah, that, that, that service food is uh, becoming more and more something that the customer expects to see, uh, when they're walking in. It also strikes me that an opportunity is we've talked about fresh, we've talked about healthy. It took me hanging out with nutritionists to realize that that frozen is just as good as fresh. And it seems that the, maybe it's understood in places around the world, but I don't think it's widely understood in the US. And there can be an opportunity for retailers to say, you know, this is nutritious. This has a great shelf life. This is a value. We're thinking out for you. Here you go. Yeah, you're. I think you're right there. And what you need to get for adoption is just to get them to try it once. And once they try it, um, and they find out you know, that the that the quality of the the products is good, then uh, 
uh, then they become your repeat business, especially if it saves on their wallet. Um, and uh, the CPG community has been working very hard for decades to try and make these products just as good as the fresh alternatives. And they're, and they're succeeding. Um, we look at uh, you know, another uh, trend that we're seeing that falls in line with uh, healthy options is uh, in the pack bev category and the explosion of sports drinks or uh, modified water you know that's a there's been a lot of um, expansion and that's just not in the US we're, we're seeing that in Europe where we're seeing that in Asia where uh, these sports drinks uh, or um, you know, healthily, if that's a word <laughs> modified mm-hmm. drinks are becoming more prevalent and they're they're seeing huge growths. And also we talked uh, just about, you know, coffee drinks are becoming sport drinks and all this, the everything, the, the forget channel blurring, it's product blurring. And, and I remember probably 10 years ago going to a store and they just had an enormous rack of Pedialyte. And my question was, wow, you must have a lot of babies in the community. And it's like, no, Pedialyte ain't for babies. It's for people who uh, had a really good time on Friday night. That's and uh, now you see Pedialyte as, as a sports drink. And, and you know, they have a whole product line to, dedicated for adults. Yes. And that, uh, you know, that, that provides its own, uh, its own, uh, we'll, we'll say opportunities for, uh, making sure that we're, we're classifying all those kind of, you know, is it, um, it moves out of what, you know, the HBC, the health and beauty category into enhanced water, um, or then it, then it takes the next step into sports drink. Um, and that they're not the only ones that are doing, it. I know, you know, uh, Gatorade is doing it and then there's, um, and there are new launches, the the, the prime, I think, uh, that mm-hmm. swept the nation. Now we're, I, I know we're just talking specifically in the U.S., but you get out there and you look at a global report and you start seeing those spikes in sports drinks. That's actually something that some uh, a, a local uh, operator could look at and maybe do a little bit more research and find out, well, what is that sport drink that's, that's blowing up overseas? And is that something that I could get here uh, on my shelf? And differentiate yourself. That's right. So the, the the quarterly report it's it's on the NAC's website under convenience.org slash research, and then look under global uh, global convenience store industry report. Fifty some pages of fun facts and figures, and in, in, say that jokingly, but most of all analysis. But the the Nielsen, and that's just you know what, just a brief, brief um, window into some of the tools that Nielsen has available. Um, you want to want to guide people towards uh, where else they can learn a little bit more about the the resources available to them from. I said Nielsen and IQ. I'm learning. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, we did rebrand ourselves not too long ago, so that's that's fine. And I know you and I have worked together for for a while where it was just Nielsen. Um, but yes, it is Nielsen IQ. So you can go to uh, NielsenIQ.com. Uh, you know, you can look us up, and on that site, not only um, you know, are you on the landing page, we have pages and pages of thought leadership that um, spans all the channels uh, of business that we do. And so sometimes you may want to look at uh, maybe what the drug channel or the grocery channel is doing versus the convenience channel, um, just like you know, the global report is looking at other countries, you know, what's happening in other countries. And we post all that there. It's all free. Um, if you want to know uh, more about what Nielsen might be able to do for you, um, on a one-on-one basis, you can always look me up. I'm on LinkedIn. I, mean, I actually think I'm on the, the NAX website under the syndicated data program, which is another you know great offering for NAX members where you know uh, they can get a taste of what uh, Nielsen can you know directly help them uh, with their business. But yeah, uh, NielsenIQ.com uh, is where you can find us. Well, thank you for everything you've done putting together the, the global insights, the U.S. insights. Um, convenience and beyond convenience. So uh, we really value the partnership, Jason, and thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Jeff. It was a pleasure being here. And thank you all for listening to Convenience Matters. Convenience Matters is brought to you by Nax and produced in partnership with Human Factor. For more information, visit convenience.org.